why resolutions fail. I'm tempted every year at this time to go on a rant about New Year's resolutions. And this year, I think it's time to burst the bubble of control many of us believe we have that would make us believe that we could keep those resolutions made. One of my beloved mentors was ranting the other day about vision boards. She noticed that every year the boards were pretty much the same. The pictures of a lavish mansion, the perfect body, the epic love affair, the wedding ring, and after eight years, none of her visions for the future had come true. She believes the reason for this is that envisioning a goal or desire is not about the simple exercise of imagination. It's instead all about energy. So now my friend creates an energy board to remind her of that fact. All things are possible in this universe. That's all things are possible. This is the first premise that must be embraced before any visioning can become a reality. We so often, right off the bat, disallow certain possibilities because we've chosen to make it so. I'm never going to have a lot of money. I'm always going to be fat. I'm never going to find that perfect love, etc., etc. Now, all these conclusions are underlying all the desires to the contrary. So when you make a vision board, you immediately collide with the reality of your conclusions, and the visioning becomes wistful daydreaming that overlays what you know to be true about life. These things are just not possible. These realities that you know to be true are actually arbitrary choices that have been made and reinforced through experience. These realities become a point of view about life and limit what is possible for you this infinite being. First, it's not about control. There is no such thing as controlling your life. We believe we have control because we can make predictions about what is going to happen based on specific actions we take. I'm controlling my life by getting up every day at 7 a.m., doing my workout, then driving to work. I'm in control. Well, this is an illusion. What is happening here is that you are simply following along a certain pattern of energy that you chose in the past. This is an important distinction. You choose a certain energy that then expresses itself as your life. You are not controlling anything. You are choosing energies, and what unfolds as a result of those choices is what you think you are controlling. In a sense, choice itself could be considered control. But if anything, it's the only control you have, and it completely eclipses any abilities you may think you have to make things happen. This is why there is failure. Failure is a conflict one has with the energies they've chosen. I fail to be a success in my job because what it would take to succeed at that job goes against all the choices I've made to the contrary in the past. The beautiful thing about this conundrum is that you do have a choice. You can choose your way out of a bad situation, bad feelings, a bad life. The key is to continue to choose what it is you truly desire, and this requires honest assessments. What makes me feel really light, excited, inspired, and lifted up? Well, go that way. Following the energy is an ancient operating mode of shamans. They choose the desired energy they want to have in their life and then follow it through time by continuing to choose it and doing actions that resonate with that energy. This is powerful because it breaks open newer and greater possibilities that they then continue to choose and act within that original energy. Rather than make resolutions this year, Choose an energy you would really like to have and feel in your life. And then, as the possibilities and opportunities present themselves, simply re-choose and act. It's the truest way to actualize any desire. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com